Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo gaming laptop. This is a Lenovo LOQ, exact model is a Lenovo LOQ 16 APH8. And that information can be found on the bottom sticker or inside the BIOS. In this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can service, clean or repaste your uh, laptop. If yours is running really hot and it's just crashing or the CPU is over throttling or you just want to simply do a servicing once in a year and you don't want to take it to a repair shop because they overcharge you. You can do this at home under I would say 10, 15, 20 minutes if you want to take it really slow and if you follow this step by step how I do it you'll be fine and I do this for a living so there's no problem. And if you have any questions you can always send them in a commentary I will answer them as soon as I can. First thing first, you don't have to worry about anything inside the files. You're not going to lose any files, anything inside the configuration, all going to be the same way that you left it. First thing first, what you want to do, you want to power it off completely. Then you want to flip it upside down, always work in a workshop towel or uh, something nice so you don't want to scratch it. You want to flip it upside down and I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using. All the tools that I use is in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. Rule number one is that workshop towel one sheet of the workshop towel and the reason for this one is for the next one that we're going to be using alcohol to remove the old thermal paste this is a 99% or 98% isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol and the reason i choose the workshop towel and not microfiber towels is because as soon as you put alcohol on the components on the towel to clean the motherboard this will rip apart easily and will not damage the components on the board so that's why I always say use workshop towels, don't use any uh, microfiber towels. Next, you need a screwdriver set. I have the basic I fix a screwdriver set. And these are expensive a little bit, but they're worth it. They last you many years. I bought the basic set. And if you get the pro set, they give you opening tools and some tweezers. If not, for the opening tools, I always use the guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and cover. Uh, a spatula, a plastic one, or a wooden one, I would say it's hard to find, but just get a plastic spatula, a curved tweezer or a straight tweezer, whichever you want. Uh, thermal paste, you can, for this brand, I'll be using a Thermal Grizzly Extreme. These are really good, it's like a near to liquid metal, and these are really good and they're durable. So we're going to be using this one. And pretty much we are done. If I miss anything, I'll let you guys know. A toothbrush. I uh, used our new toothbrush to clean the fans. And uh, you see down here is a dust in it so you can clean it easily. It can reach nice and just gently. Don't push too hard. Just gently. It will do the job. You can do this one from here. But yeah. All right. So let's get into it and let's open it up. So first thing first, we want to remove the screws on the bottom cover. There are two types of screws, the short ones and the long screws. The short ones are the four in the front end of the laptop. So I got to grab the Phillips number one. You want to remove these four screws in front of the laptop. These are the short ones and you want to keep them in a separate file. You don't want to mix, mix them with the rest of the screws. All right, now the two side ones and back corners and two mid back by the grill. These are the long screws, so go ahead and remove them too and keep them in a separate file. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the commentary. I appreciate that. All right, once we remove these screws, now there's a hidden screw, three of them. They're under the grill. We need to remove this back grill. To remove it, what you want to do, you want to push this grill backward, but in order to push it, you want to release the clip. To release it, stick the topic right in there and just jack it up a little bit like that. And while you're pushing, you want to leave that click down. That's one clip. And you want to do the same thing in here. Lift it up and push it back. All right. Now you can just simply just slide back or it just falls off. Doesn't matter. You can take it outside and clean it. There's a dust in there. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of dust. You can even wash it up, leave it for dry. All right, and down here we can see two hidden screws on the corner and one right in the middle. These are the same long screws as the rest of the screws that you remove on the bottom. So I'll leave them in the same pile. All right, once you do that, you want to grab the cover in here. It's just loosen up. You want the cover, not the motherboard, just the cover. 
and put your thumb in here and bring it up, up, down like this, work it around and you want to hear a big click sound, that's fine. Do this one and you're going to hear the clicks on the bottom. There's a clips in here in, on the front end, you just get loose. And there's a tiny, a big, not a tiny one, a big hook right in here that hooks up right in the middle of the motherboard. So that's why you want to hear that click sound. All right, let's, you can take this one with a toothbrush, clean the dust mesh, stuff like that, and just blow some compressed air. And we can see the two big fans. These are pretty clean, but dirty, but not that dirty. So anyway, first thing first, we're going to disconnect the battery. By removing this jack, it's sliding the jack backward. There are two hooks, one on here, one on here. You want to put your fingernails on top of these black hooks, and you want to slide it backward toward the battery. And make sure don't let it go. Just bring it up and that's it. Now, these fan cables are really delicate, so you don't want to fragile, you don't want to yank on these cables. That's why we're gonna use tweezers. We're gonna put it on the hooks the same way that we remove this one. You're gonna push this one just gently, you wanna overdo it and hit the any components with the tweezers. You can use your fingernails, just work it around and it will come out. There you go. So pretty much I'm just trying to grab the side of the uh, connectors. One right here too. So I'll try to see if I can hook these tweezers right in there. I can't, so I'm going to use my fingernail. Hook it up a little bit. There we go. All right. Once we remove this one, now, you can cut this gaffer tape in the middle so you don't have to touch the cover for the RAM. But I don't like cover, uh, cutting them because this is just a grounding. This gaffer tape on the other side is metallic, so it's just pretty much grounding this shield to the heat pipes. So I don't like uh, breaking that. If you do it, it's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift, lift up the RAM cover, bring them up. And that's it, leave it here. You can see this is just metallic. All right, so let's start from this side. We're gonna remove one screw on the corner here. And we're gonna follow, no more screws. There's a screws on the GPU or CPU. I don't know which one. This is AMD CPU, this is the GPU. So remove the screws that touches the GPU. These are the brackets that hold them and one in here in the middle. The CPU screws are all the same, so don't worry about mismatching them. Oops. One more screw right in the corner here. Once you removed all this, just double check, make sure you haven't missed any. Okay, metal right here. Now, simply we want to lift it up right from here by the heat sink. Bring it up. And you can flip it over. Now you can see the thermal pads right in here. And we're gonna go over the thermal pad. These are point on the GPU. There's a 0.5 millimeter. This is a 0.5 millimeter. On the VRAMs are 0.5 millimeter. Well, hold on a second. These are the VRAMs, 0.5. And for the coils, these are 0.5 and 3 millimeter. It's for the power regulators. And uh, same thing here, 3 millimeters and 0.5 for the uh, power delivery. All right. So we're gonna put this to one side. We're gonna look down here. All right. So we can see the GPU and the VRAMs. This one is missing a VRAM. Uh, I think different model they give you a bit more VRAMs. And the CPU, AMD CPU. Just I'm using this one gently, pulling it out. Remove the old thermal pads. I mean thermal pad, thermal paste. So gently just poking around. You don't want to do it too hard gently, I'm just doing it to remove the excess of the thermal paste. We can touch the board with no problem, I have no grounding or anything like that. So it's safe as long as you touch one metal cover and something like that, then you can just use this one. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're going to grab a little bit of the workshop towel. You're going to Soak it in an alcohol, and we're gonna wipe over the GPU in a circular motion. 
So I'll flip it over. All you care about is the CPU die or GPU die crystal. You don't care about the one around it. So don't worry if you have thermal paste on the capacitors in between the capacitor, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You don't want to go crazy cleaning those. You see this one, how it rips apart and it will not damage those tiny capacitors over the CPU. All right, you're going to do the same thing in here. But if your thermal pads are still fine, it's not broken, and if they're not dried up, leave them. But if you want to replace them, uh, purchase and get the new ones. And there we have it, nice and clean. And now you can take it outside, use a toothbrush to clean up the fan in here and blow some air. You don't need to open it up completely. Just use the clean it up. But if your laptop is really old, you probably have clogged up the heat sink in there. And that's when you do need to open it up. To do that service, I'm going to show you guys in a second. But if you came all the way to, up to here, then you might want to clean up, check your uh, ventilation to make sure it's clean. Change back down to Phillips number zero and remove the screws right over the fans. These are tiny screws. There are three or four of them on each. All right, so once you remove these ones here, you can pull it back down. Just as a gaffer's tape right in here. This gaffer's tape is not allowing you to open it. But once you remove it, you can see the fan right in here. You can take it outside and clean it. And if you have any dust right in here, a little bit in here, but not a big deal. But sometimes they do get clogged up completely, depending how many years you used it, how often you use it. You want to use toothbrush and clean it up. Again, toothbrush, blow some dry compressed air and put it, bring it over. Get a gaffer's tape to put over these lines right in here. Gaffer's tape right there. And uh, same thing goes to the other one. Same thing, gaffer's tapes and open it up and clean it up. This one is pretty clean. I don't need to go ahead to do anything else in here. So if yours, you find one of them is dirty, open up the other one. It doesn't take not even one minute to double check your ventilation, make sure how it is. Because sometimes when it's really clogged up and you even blow air through here, the dust will go in, jam the fan and the fan will not spin. So don't think like, oh, I can just do a vacuum. I can use a vacuum to suck it out. It's not going to work always. So it's better to do it manually, open it up, and do a good job. All right. Now that we have the heat sink cleaned up, the fans cleaned up, we're going to come back here, and we're going to grab ourselves the thermal paste. This thermal paste comes here. You can get a syringe one or whatever you want. You just want to put a big blob in the middle. That's all you want to do. Or you can just spread it, whatever you want. It all makes no difference. It's the same. So people are like, oh, I'll put a big blob. You get an air bubble. There's nothing, no such a thing. Just put one blob in the middle and you will see the same temperature as you put it, spread it around. Thirty gram. It costs about two hundred bucks, hundred fifty. So it's expensive. Clean up always your spatula before you make a mess. All right. Once we have this one done, ready. What you want to do? Grab the fan system. Bring it over. Let put it upside down. Put this one over. Bring it down straight. And drop it right over. And Go ahead and put the screws right on the heat sink. There are, let's go ahead and first put this cover straight down by the ram. Push it down. Okay. Now there are a number, it says two, number one, I believe it should be somewhere over here. One, two, three, four, doesn't matter. But as long as you cross the screw them, that's the basic idea. I'm starting with number two. As long as you cross the screw them, you're fine. And you don't want to go clockwise or counterclockwise. As long as you cross the screw them, the thermal paste is evenly going to spread all over the CPU and GPU. And this CPU and GPU, they don't have an ISH, that's a metal bracket over, so the surface area is very small, so it will spread nicely. 
All right, you should be left with two screws, and these two screws goes in the corner holding up the heat sink. One in there, and one right over here. All right, as always, make sure you plug in the fan, just slide it right inside the connector. The same way that you removed it, just pinch them all the way in. It has to go all the way in. If it goes firmly inside, but sometimes people do service and they forget to put the fan in and they just suddenly start shutting down because of overheating. All right, once we have that one in there, double check, make sure everything is in place. Now we're gonna plug in the battery connector in, face it in front of the jack and straight in and pinch them together. All right, once we're done with that, we're gonna grab the bottom cover that we already cleaned Bring it over, push the corner side, make sure you those clip in the middle, that click in the middle, front end, all those nice click sounds. Put the three screws, uh, one in the corner back first, all the way in the back. And one right in the middle back. And one to the left corner back. All right. Next, you want to grab the grill. You want to bring it over evenly, gently, and simply push it in. It should go in with no force, all the way in, and it should click in. And go ahead and put the rest of the screws. Remember, the short screws are in the front end. The long screws, they go on the rest of the place. Always put the back plate, the grill, before you put these corner ones. Otherwise, the back grill will not go through. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just going to finish up putting up the back screws. I'm going to power on at the end of the video so you guys can see that it powers on. So some people are like, oh, you shouldn't be touching that. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So... All right, we should see a logo Lenovo, there you go. And that's it for today's video.